How's it going guys? Past level question for opt-out to CK internal medicine. If you're studying for step one, it's important to know some opt-out diagnoses. Before we get started, please subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate it. Give you a like, really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram and threads, Nolan underscore medical, MEHL, man underscore medical, links down below for me on Telegram. Links to the Telegram group and channel down below. Let's start the clip. 54-year-old woman. She has a two-hour history of painless loss of vision in her left eye, following bumping into the corner of a cabinet. Examination shows visual acuity 20 out of 300 in the left eye, 20 out of 30 in the right eye. She has a history of hypertension, diabetes, which is the following most likely diagnosis. So we have this fundoscopy here, which is extremely buzzy, okay, pass level. Uh, and I'll talk about that as we move through the question. Should I say central retinal artery occlusion? Wrong fucking answer. So central retinal artery occlusion can occur in, most classically in patients who either have carotid stenosis due to atheromata from hypertension, okay, you have hypertension pounding the uh, common carotid endothelial damage, atheromata development that can launch off to the brain slash eye, cause retinal artery occlusion, or it's going to be patients who have atrial fibrillation. Okay. If they don't mention anything about high blood pressure, usually atrial fibrillation patient over 75, that'll be a left atrial mural thrombus that's launched off to the brain slash eye, stroke TIA, retinal artery occlusion. Wrong fucking answer. Choice B. And the other thing about retinal artery occlusion uh, that we know it's wrong is because one, this fundoscopy is clearly not that, as I'll talk about. And number two, they can show you a uh, a pale retina. Okay, they'll show you a pale retina, often with a cherry red spot. So if you have retinal artery occlusion, you have loss of blood to the retina, hence it's pale, not dramatic, but you still have the choroidal artery, which can supply the retina, causing a cherry red spot. It's just a different fundoscopy. As I already said, wrong fucking answer. Choice B, central retinal vein occlusion, wrong fucking answer. I don't think I've ever, maybe once I've seen this show up, they'll just say congested neck veins, uh, neck veins, the fuck am I saying? They'll just say congested retinal veins, literally, okay? And it'll be a patient who has history of hypertension, diabetes, and they can say absent venous pulsations, holy shit. Absent venous pulsations can reflect in increased intracranial pressure, okay? And it can also be seen in central retinal vein occlusion. They'll literally just say tortuosity and congested retinal veins. Wrong fucking answer. Choice C, hypertensive retinopathy, wrong fucking answer. So once again, the fundoscopy doesn't match it. And secondly, they will tell us or show us AV nicking. They literally don't expect you to be an ophthalmologist where you're like, well, that's AV nicking. They don't give a fuck. In the vignette, they'll say it. If they say arterial venous nicking, that's extremely buzzy for hypertensive retinopathy. It's just a finding you need to know. Uh, they can say flame hemorrhages. Okay, so hemorrhages, uh, hard exudates, that's hypertensive retinopathy. Hard exudates, lipoproteinaceous deposits. Okay, so that can be diabetes, hypertension. Okay, lipoproteinaceous deposits, they're called hard exudates. And soft exudates, those are also known as cotton wool spot, spots. Those are axoplasmic materials, so just damaged nerves. And don't confuse the hard exudates, the lipoproteinaceous material that we get with hypertensive retinopathy or diabetic nephropathy with drusen, which is which are also lipoproteinaceous deposits. They're more yellow and dense in appearance. And those are uh, macular degeneration, which I made a prior clip on probably a few clips ago here on the YouTube. So hypertensive retinopathy, we would see hemorrhages throughout this fundoscopy here. Wrong fucking answer. Choice D, retinal opposition, correct answer. This is retinal detachment. Now what you're looking at is this entire superior part of the uh, fundoscopic image, you're seeing the detached retina. It appears slightly beige in color. It can appear gray. Okay, I actually jacked up the uh, exposure, the brightness of this fundoscopy, but it can appear gray and they can tell you what they love doing. And I talked about this in the other clip is that they'll give you a boxer who was hit in the eye and uh, they'll show you this fundoscopy and it's retinal detachment and they like uh, uh, distracting you with vitreous hemorrhage. Okay, you think, well, there could be a hemorrhage if someone was hit in the eye. It's not vitreous hemorrhage. You would see literally red modeling everywhere and uh, that would be from diabetes classically. Okay, so it's a very different uh, fundoscopy. So retinal detachment, one of the major risk factors is severe myopia. So you have elongation of the eye. So uh, different uh, architecture of the eye as a result, and that can increase the propensity for retinal attachment. So here, uh, the decreased visual acuity in this eye isn't necessarily because of the retinal detachment. That's actually, the retinal detachment's causing the loss of vision in the eye. It's 
uh, the decreased visual acuity that was actually the risk factor for the retinal attachment in the first place. Okay, so myopia is a risk factor or getting hit in the eye, as I said. So combination of getting hit in the eye, her bumping into the cabinet uh, on a background of myopia, uh, that was her uh, risk fact combined risk factor for retinal detachment here. And they're not going to ask about treatments or anything like that, but there's actually a pneumatic type of surgery where they inject a bubble into the vitreous and that can help push the retina back onto the eye. So real quick, uh, vitreous tear around fucking answer. Nonsense answer choice, just made it up on the spot. Okay, I don't, this is this doesn't exist for USMLA. So the point of this short clip for consolidation, because we're not trying to make things uh, very nitpicky and dramatic here, is you just have to know this is an easy, buzzy, pass level fundoscopy for retinal attachment. We have this well demarcated uh, lifting off or projection of the retina into the vitreous. You know the deal. I'm going to make more content. I feel like my stuff. Subscribe my channel. I appreciate your time. That's it.